Greetings YouTube, coming at you Saturday 25th of March and I noticed a strange cyclical clunking noise uh, which I presume to be the bearings. I don't have any grease so what I did, I undid these and sprayed a load of WD-40 inside and lo and behold, I'll give it a spin, they sound fairly good. All you can hear is the chain touching on there but obviously when it goes vertical the chain doesn't touch that anymore. So that's good. I did that to all of them and for future I'll remember to put all these on one side because obviously when I squirted the WD-40 in it was preferential on this one because that was the right way up whereas that's at the bottom but I spun it round. And yes, definitely while it's down I need to measure this because I want to buy some aluminium if I can, some box section to take some of the weight off. Also need to get this tail painted up but that can wait. But yeah, apart from that, it seems okay. I just had a bit of a thrashing, I'll be honest with you. But anyway, we'll leave those on for now. So that should be going back up in the air fairly soon. There's uh, some stuff I'm thinking about with the design with regards to getting rid of a lot of this, especially this thing. Uh, get rid of this and have something flat on the base, uh, which will bring the blades down a lot and may cause problems with the wires. But let, let me show you what it is. So I've got this random stand that I can put the wind turbine on if I want to work on it. And on top of it is a monster bearing, which has a 50 mil ID. There you go. And the reason I bought that is because this can be secured straight onto the top of a tower. Uh, there's various ways. I haven't even thought about how I'm going to do it yet. It's got grub screws. The problem is, and the issue I need to get over is the fact that this can move like that and back and forward with when there's too much stress on it. So the options are to weld it here, uh, which I don't think I'm gonna do, but on a side issue, I have this sacrificial bearing that I can test welding it to, so that might be one idea. The other idea is to use bolts that come down and fix to something which is fairly tight but can move and then that will stop it coming down anywhere because you want it to stay flat, 100% flat uh, because if there's too much weight on one end but that this could be a major leap forward just to show you, it's a big old thing so it's 141 mil across yeah, so I just want to show you that that is a beautiful thing, isn't it? I'm just going to take it off and show you it flipped up so yeah, it's a beautiful thing, that is my friends. That is by far the biggest bearing I've ever bought. And that's it compared to one of the collars that I use for the blade hubs. So yeah, that is really awesome that. And you'll definitely be seeing this in a video once I've worked around uh, the potential issues with it. Sweet. This just, this just shows how thin the tail is. Sweet, but yeah, in the next video, it should be back up. Uh, the wind's calmed down a lot. But one for good luck. But so if we look again, I'm waffling now, that bearing could replace all this. Uh, so that is the plan, to make a new frame, uh, similar design, but get rid of this. And that's also saving a few kilograms in weight because the next turbine, I want it to be a lot lighter, if possible even though it should be more powerful. You can see the sag in the chain there. Sorry, you can see the sag in the chain there. Minute amount of clearance. And also, it would replace this thing, which I made myself, which is fairly cool and has done a job. Uh, but yeah, that is, uh, that is gonna be sweet. So right, I'll catch up with you soon. Sweet! Just thought I'd show you what it looked like upside down. So yeah, that's lovely. I'm infatuated, she's a beauty.